Hi everyone, my name is David Peace, and today I'm going to be taking you through different types of pixels. Now a pixel is a light that has three LEDs inside of it, a red, a green, and a blue. And you can use those colors to mix together and make any color you need for your light show. Now there's different types, different shapes, different protocols, different everything, and it can get a little bit confusing. So what are the most common ones? Those are what we're going to be going through today. And how do you choose? Well, there's three criteria on basically how you're going to want to choose the types of pixels for your show. Uh, number one is aesthetics. How does it look? Do you want the black wire, the white wire? And then next is, where's it going to go? How's it going to mount? So depending on the physical location that you're putting your pixels, you might need different shapes of pixels to fit in that area. And then finally, there's price. Um, the prices vary from vendor to vendor, but I've roughly put out the pixels from cheapest to most expensive. Let's start with the bullet pixel. This is likely the cheapest pixel that you'll find of the types of pixels because it's the most commonly used and the most widely available. Now this bullet pixel is called a bullet pixel because you guessed it, it's shaped like a bullet. And this guy can go uh, pretty much all over the place in your show. So unless you have uh, space constraints, this is probably a good default option for you. And it's the cheapest. So the different type of mounting positions for a bullet pixel would be the very common mega tree. And what you'll see is a tree with strips similar to this. And bullets are typically used because there's no clearance issues behind these strips as they're hanging from your tree. So good option for a mega tree. You could also use bullet pixels in ground stakes. So they press in and that way the, the viewing audience can see the bullet and this prop here is specifically made for bullets. So the bullet pixel is a good default option for price and um, you can just put this pretty much all over your show. The next is the square node. Now the square node, as it's aptly named, is shaped like a square, but it's also lower profile. So what you're going to get is a vast reduction in the height of the pixel node. Now the price difference between these is pretty minor, but if you have space limitations, the square node is an option. Next we have icicles. Now these guys look very similar to the bullets. That's because they're the same light, but they are a little bit more expensive, but only because they need to have a little bit more wire as you're going up and down these drops. This type of node is used pretty much uh, exclusively on the trims of houses. So what you'll see is you'll see it hanging down from the house like traditional uh, icicles. And the drop patterns are customizable, but typically you're gonna see a drop of five pixels, four pixels, three pixels, and then that repeats. Five pixels, four pixels, three pixels. So if you wanna use icicles, you can actually use pixels and uh, they work just the same as, as all of the other lights. Next up, we have the pixel strip the highly controversial pixel strip. Now this is controversial because not a lot of people like to use this in their show and I am one of those people. But I do use it, I have to use it in some places based on the space limitation. So this is a really good option for the Matt Johnson leaping arches that many of you guys have seen or putting it in lights, um, lamp posts where there's very limited space inside the lamp post. Um, so why don't people like pixel strip? Well. They're very, very difficult to repair. That's probably the number one issue. The, the solder points on these are very, very small. You have to splice into the, the outer material, do the repairs, then you have to you know, re-silicone it and it's hard to, to stick to this outer casing and sometimes you get water ingress or dust or you know, other types of things that cause it to short out. It's just a mess, it's a headache. Usually the failure rate's pretty high. So, what I typically tell people is only use the pixel strip where you absolutely have to, but uh, you know it does give a beautiful look. Some people do trim their house with pixel strip, and it gives an awesome look because there's such a high density of light. But uh, you know, if if history serves it uh, as any indication, these probably aren't going to be the most reliable choice if you're going to be using these uh, all over your display. So next up, we have the flatback pixel node, and these are typically called Technicolor pixels. I don't know why they're called Technicolor pixels. Every other pixel node type makes sense. Um, I would have called this the flat pixel node, but these are typically called Technicolor for some reason. 
um, and they have a flat back. And this is perfect for mounting directly on flat surfaces. So you can put this on the ground, on the wall, directly on a pipe, and you can just strap it right to the pipe, put it on a tree. So these are really, really nice for any mounting position where you just need to go flat on the surface and not worry about the wire encumbering it. Now, as far as height, very similar to the square node. It's actually maybe a little bit taller than the square node, but when you take into account the wire, because the square node has the wire going in the back, the height actually ends up being about the same, but this can't sit flat. This one can. So the Technicolor one, that's the one you're gonna want for uh, flat mounting positions. And then finally, we have the C9. So this is a C9 style, uh, but they're pixels. And little secret, most of these are actually just the Technicolor pixels with a cap on the top. And so you're paying a little bit extra just for the cap to make it look like a C9 that diffuses the light. So these are really good for on the roof because you can see them from a long ways away. They're very big and they're very bright. So typically you're gonna see the C9 style up on the roof. The protocol that these lights use is called WS2811. That sounds very confusing, but really all it means is how do these lights talk to each other? Now there's WS2812, 2812A and B, and different variations, but if you're in the WS2811, 12, those are these types of pixels. Those are the ones you're gonna to wanna to keep. Those are the ones that are most common and will work with most of the different um, equipment that you have. But have you heard about dumb nodes, smart nodes? What does that mean? Well, everything you see here is a smart node. That means each individual pixel light can be a different color. I can make this one red, I can make this one green, I can make this one blue, I can make this one purple, pink, and so on and so forth. These are called smart because every single light can be different. Now, what's a dumb pixel node? Well, a dumb pixel node cannot do that. If you turn it blue, it's all gonna be blue. If you turn it green, it's all gonna be green. So you lose a lot of flexibility in your light show. Are there places for it? Sure, maybe. The cost difference, eh, it's a little cheaper, I think. Maybe even, I don't know, maybe it's not anymore. But the bottom line is, don't go dumb. If you go to a dumb pixel strip, you're locked in. You've spent all of this money and you don't get any of the flexibility. So stick to the pixels that can actually change the smart pixels, the WS2011s, the 12s. Those are gonna be what you wanna use in your show and that's what's gonna make it really dynamic and all the animation and all the drama and all the fun. That's what you wanna use. So if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. I'd love to help people out. Um, but this should uh, give you a, hopefully a good guideline of what types of pixels you wanna use in your show. Thanks for watching.